12 gauge sandwich. The first release from the Michael Clark 3.5 has just been certified negative platinum. Well, if you wanted honesty, you have come to the wrong place. Here's something to think about. When you drink alcohol, you live a week. Be careful. And after that, you gonna be a dialysis. Ooh, I love it. Time to whip it out and start cutting. The power of the mic compels you. Much like the cock, I need one. And at this point, you can smell the Caucasian through your speakers. You're screaming at cream. I think I missed half of the references, but I understood the point. This is the Disinformed Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm John. I'm Michael. And we have a very special and sexual, sensual guest with us this evening. John is piqued like a teenager's interest after a Megan Fox film. Show me how them tits fart. <laughs> Sandbags himself. <laughs> Mr. Sandbags. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Mr. Courtney. Hello. <laughs> A.K.A. Jonah. That's what they call me sometimes. Although I prefer Mr. Sandbags himself, because... <laughs> Actually, okay. That's Mr. Just... Sandbags it is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's a, it's a fun it's handle. A proper, more, more of a proper name than anything. <laughs> no. It's not a Christian name by any stretch. <laughs> Before we started rolling, we got you hip to one of our favorite uh, clips, which is the Alki Hall. And the dialysis. Well, you know, it's and the TikTok, yeah, the TikToksic Avenger. Exactly. Now we have a very heated debate in our camp on one thing about that video. Mm -hmm. Was that a man or a woman? Yes. <laughs> it's Pat. That's that's the best answer. It is. I, it, I mean, it's really Survey more. Says. She was more of a PSA than a person. Like she was just <laughs> out there looking out for our health. And I guess it was she just there. So I guess. A lady to a degree. Listen. You really took the warning to heart as well, because the moment that clip finished, you took a big old swig from a wild turkey bottle. You have to stay hydrated. You or sure do. Non-hydrated. <laughs> the joke's on us. It's actually just piss. I mean, yeah. <laughs> He's not <laughs> into your you kinks, drink? John. Stop <laughs> flopping it off on everybody else. You're projecting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome back to the Glorious Disinformed Podcast, as always, just teetering on the edge of chaos, because I did not write out a lie for this week as evidenced by what just flew out on the sperm of the moment. Yeah, I thought for a second that you were just leaving it into our hands of just, are we doing a, are we going against the grain here? Or are we doing just a free form intro and see what happens like the I, old days? I don't care enough about you to have come up with something in advance. So fuck it. We'll do it live. Sounds like marriage. Yeah. That, yeah. That's my experience. Well, how is everyone doing? Why, why do we start off every episode like a fucking therapy session now, John? I thought that's what this was. I guess I should go. <laughs> well, that is what the claim is. They call that a microaggression. <laughs> <laughs> it has become i i don't know why it is that this is your parrot role every single week now the installment begins with john well how are you guys doing this week it's because i feel the awkward silence and i don't know where this thing is going so, so i just uh, light a little match and throw it hey john tell me how you Smart. feel about your mother she is the most precious person that you've ever come across I want you to tell me the first thing that springs to your mind when I say urethrosounding. Drills. Yes. Drill bits. Indeed. And sandbag tits. Yes. Drill bits and sandbag tits. <laughs> I love that follow-up voice song. The Becky story. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyone else care to answer now that I've lambasted the question? Uh, you know, please feel free. Just get it off your chest super okay nope, I, I am I, turning the ship around i qualified for the vaccine so i can i can go take that in two weeks so qualified man i wish i could lie about strange way to work i was gonna, say, well, it's like I was gonna mean... say i wish i could lie about being an educator <laughs> they, they <laughs> <laughs> that kind of actually i i got an email two days ago saying hey we've been informed this morning that ta's teaching assistants count as educators so you can go get one 
Like, Please. they barely count, but we, we still have to count you. Legally, we have to count you, so that's the only reason you're included. If we had our way, you wouldn't be. I feel like a question was asked to the people up top deciding who gets vaccines and who doesn't, and someone was like, hey, what about TAs? And the person was already walking away, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, I don't care. Okay, Michael. Michael, okay, so I have a question for you. Uh, are you ready to officially be autistic? Because that's what they're putting in that vaccine, is no. autisticness. No, it, that's it's not this one. It's just the microchip from from Bill Gates. Oh no, dose one is microchip. Dose two is full blown autism. Ask my sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Like it's the first one, first round. So I get the microchip, then I get the autism. There are I'm some excited. amazing uh, TikToks that Becky has shared with me. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, people being <laughs> Shane just shakes his head in disappointment. <laughs> well, there's there's one where like it, it it's like essentially like are you nervous to get the the vaccine because it could cause whatever, and it goes to someone who is neurodivergent in a chair like not being you know has he's like well I can't become more disabled at this point is like what he says into the camera. I was like <laughs> I've seen that one. That's good. Call the content. They're like what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> i See realize what happens when you don't answer my original question shane i do <laughs> skew towards the angry elderly in our particular demographic here so i will just shake my fist at the sky and say get off my lawn as you continue with this tiktok nonsense what are you antifa <laughs> listen queen antifa has released a slew of marvelous melodies over the years and i will not sit for this slander She's I'm... in a new TV show, I think, or something like that, that that's airing this year or something. Some police show. I like I that think. he's rolling over mispronunciation. I suppose he's just acclimated to it at this point. <laughs> yeah, I, I just uh, I take everything in, in stride at this point. But also, it made me remember that I saw a pairing of tweets that reminded me of you guys. Because the header is Ben Shapiro, 1984 to 2021 like kind of like a tombstone mm -hmm. and it's him tweeting literally every regular human i know owns zip ties this is like pauline kale on steroids to which someone responds ben usually i joke but i'm going to come at this honestly there's a big difference between zip ties being carried by paramilitary forces invading the capital and zip ties being carried by your wife so she can tie you to a chair and make you watch her have sex with other men <laughs> Both of those are such good times. <laughs> I have a feeling that Mr. Shapiro is getting the Casino Royale every couple days. Oh, I would imagine. Which, so. for those who are unacquainted, is the film where James Bond was strapped to a wooden chair with the bottom ripped out and they swung a giant rope at his genitals for about 10 minutes. Yeah, I, I mean, there's worse ways to die. Oh, you're not going to die that way. That's how you live. Yeah, <laughs> that's how you live. I've been I've been living with elephantitis of the testicles for years. It, it's not going to kill you. It's it's just you know, your Saturday night is a lot more cumbersome. I like how you like. That's never happened to you, but like you lived up to your to your thing. <laughs> You're like it's neither here nor there, but like they're there. They aren't going to suck themselves. The Shane Hunt story. <laughs> I'm actually not sitting on a chair right now. This is just my <laughs> testicles. I have a yoga ball with me at all times. I just kind of lean back and I'm I'm lounging. Which is why you were triggered by the tanuki. And the, the Randy Marsh thing with the wheelbarrow. That's Oh that, yeah, you are eligible for medical marijuana. I am. Quality I am. content that episode. <laughs> it was quality content. I smoke it with my butt, but it's, you know, highlight. Well, I do everything with my butt. I know That's that. A damn fact. <laughs> <laughs> so this was supposed to be free form and now you guys are arguing on who's going to present their no, topics. No, we're going to explain no. what happened is that Michael threatened to go back to back with not one but two rambling and incoherent episodes in a row and I <laughs> simply refused to sit still is it for this it. This episode 140 of that. <laughs> <laughs> it, pretty goddamn close <laughs> no, what's the his, difference? his girlfriend called me and she said i ran out of paxel and i need help he's a talking again <laughs> and the zip ties have stopped to hold him and i need to get my daughter out of the house safe i cannot be restrained <laughs> <laughs> and uh right after he gets the vaccine he will also be going straight to county Ooh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Swing and a miss there, but we're, yeah, yeah. we're going to... Yes, so in any event, I was not necessarily prepared because I had assumed that Courtney was being sarcastic last week when she said she was not going to be here, and I thought we were diving headlong into Velocipaster, so I was not prepped initially. But now, given the looming threat of, of Michael boring the audience <sighs> one more time, I have stepped up to the plate, and we do have an episode this evening. And Jonah, you, you don't really... You don't really listen to this show. No, not once. I've you just kind of to... stumbled into the room and Courtney said, here, hold this. Yeah. And then yeah. she left and went to get a pack of smokes. Exactly. And hopefully she comes back because dad hasn't. You have something in common with about, you know, seven to eight billion other people on the planet. that have never heard this podcast. Yeah. So, you, you know, you just get to be initiated in a very genteel way. Yeah, I mean, we do have a strong listenership. You said seven to eight billion. We at least got, you know, a couple hundred thousand somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Without there. question. Maybe a million. Yeah. Wouldn't that be the twist, though? Every day. There are offers on the table for sponsorships. It's just you, you got to figure which ones are the right ones. And, you know, where <laughs> where do we want our ad revenue coming from? You know, I want to make sure that we're supporting something worthwhile. Well, the Not dividends like from Screwchew back on season one are still paying just, you know, in the tens of cents every week what about and squee undies squee undies you know i'm gonna still defend those elephant trunks i think that they are still very flattering to the male form regardless of your girth and uh, you know they're they're comfy it's it's cotton ish unless so. we forget the uh the royalties that we we receive every time a gushing granny song is used in a nissan commercial well they are actually <laughs> partnering with our old sponsor uh boot box as well <laughs> to make sure that your stool is soft and your vagina is gushing like a geyser at any <laughs> given moment so i'm i'm proud of all of the uh the previously a, sponsored uh... <laughs> products and services that we have featured on this glorious little podcast couldn't consumers instead just cut to the chase and buy a, what is it a sibian is that what it's called or no, it's ah. the the thing that the girls sit on. Which which one are you talking about there, bud? Yeah, the Shane, you you're depraved. You the, know everything. The one that's on the uh, Howard Stern show pretty frequently. Yeah, you were the sit on it. Just you know. I think you got it the first time. Okay, cool. Why why are you looking at me like I'm an asshole? I am, but why? This, why are you talking about simians? Because you're talking about gushing. They know there's no gorillas on here. Gorilla Speak for yourself. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I am basically. I, <laughs> Give me another two years, I'll be a silverback, but it's going to take a bit. I'm only at 60% right now. Well, since this has been awkward and uh, we're all just trying not to step on each other's nuts, it's very difficult in my case, but what we typically do here for you uninitiated masses and for Jonah, I'm sorry, is uh, we will present a random esoteric topic for your general consumption, and in the midst of explaining it to one another, the host or rambling, incoherent, mush-mouthed fuck, will leaven in the occasional lie just to keep things interesting. And the goal of the show for the co-hosts is to then call out the lies as they spot them, if they spot them, and we will holler at them interloper or posse, and uh, in the hopes that, you know, we can entertain ourselves for just a few more hours. And ultimately, unfortunately... The points do not matter, and there are no winners here because we are all professed losers. And how? And that's certified. You're here. Take that to the bank. Indeed. I don't know what the bank is going to do for me, but... I have dinero in El Banco. Well. <laughs> Why? Uh... I prefer Pacino, <laughs> but that's me. Come on, Kevin. So, Where this week's gloriously gory episode is going to float around the haunting of Loftus Hall. And I'm Let's sure see. that you are all going, Qua? Qua? Hello? It sounds Indeed. like the Netflix anthology series, but like the unreleased one. <laughs> yes. Haunting at Loftus Cutting room floor. Hall. Well, uh, I'm going to pay off quite a few uh, teases that I have interlaced through the past few weeks' episodes here. And so Michael oh. should reasonably be pleased if mm. I can get that out. He'll never be pleased. He's uh, he's made this very well known. 
And I also was up at uh, 6 o'clock this morning because I got to open our lovely little library. So I am tracking on an entirely different trajectory than I normally am in the evening <laughs> hours. Ooh. So if I sound like a, an inebriated, uh, you know, bonobo monkey uh, then you just sound like the rest of us. Through this, you know, yeah, just I'm, I'm joining the club. I finally wanted to be initiated into that fraternity. Welcome. It's depressing. Yeah. But we have each other. <laughs> At least we have each other. <laughs> we have got a uh, sword fight that amounts to a storm of toothpicks. <laughs> With our powers combined, we make nine angry inches. <laughs> I still don't think that's going to live up to the, the billing. <laughs> <sighs> what a film it's like a more depressing headwig if you stuck all of our dicks into a little piece of plastic we would make a really disgusting looking toothbrush <laughs> so which one has the bristles <laughs> mostly our pubic hair is accounting are for the that bristles? yes so we have three lies contained in this presentation gentlemen best of luck and godspeed loftus hall is a large country house on the Hook Peninsula in County Wexford, Ireland. Bullshit. <laughs> Coming out hot. You know, I do love you, kid. I really do. Aw, thanks. That shtick never gets old. And I assure <laughs> you, you've never heard that phrase from anybody else. <laughs> so, uh, that is not bullshit. <laughs> oh, thanks for the clarification. Just, just I was, to, I was, you know, I was, want to make sure I was, we really I was get that wreck. out there. Yeah. <laughs> I was having a hard time. Also, I, I hoped. <laughs> <laughs> so built on the site of the original redmond hall it is said by locals to have been haunted by the devil a cadre of nuns and the ghost of a young woman what about the ghost of christmas past that was last month hmm. get with the times friend so after being purchased by aiden quigley in 2011 loftus hall was marketed as a haunted house attraction hosting guided tours of the home until 2020 when it was put on the market for sale at the behest of our good friend Ben Shapiro. Why don't you just sell it? If you don't like where you live, then why don't you just go live somewhere else? Like, literally, you could live anywhere in the world that you wanted to live with any amount of money that you could possibly make. Thank you, Cuckleberry Finn. You're very welcome. So I should note here, there is a slew of interesting history behind the hall itself and the castle lands where it occupies, uh, the bulk of which I will not detail here because we want to keep this peppy and snappy, but I will heartily encourage any history buffs amongst us, Michael, I'm winking at you, for any uh, history aficionados, to go and in in investigate the uh, residence's past when you get a chance, because it's very interesting. Cool. That said, diving full force, currently it is a three-story non-basement mansion with nine bays to the front and balustraded parapet. The name Ooh. Loftus Hall, or Loftus Hall, is also applied to the townsland surrounding the mansion. <laughs> the entire town... Wait, so the town is called Loftus Hall? Uh, essentially, the, the township surrounding the castle proper is okay. also referred to as Loftus Hall confused yet okay yep yep a tad doesn't take much bit. it's gonna get yes. worse uh the entire townland of loftus hall including the building itself can be overlooked from hook lighthouse not that that means a damn thing to anybody the hall itself erected in 1666 was a private Ooh, residence direction. for over 300 years wait is the 1666 bullshit because i feel like that's just too uh on the nose there uh, there's a caveat that I'm going to include here in that okay. I derived a good portion of this from both a uh, Ghost Adventures episode that covered this phenomenon and okay. Wikipedia entries and a couple other things. So, as far as I am aware, based on the material that I was provided, this is true. The 1666 okay. date does appear in the Wikipedia entry and was alluded to. Uh, Ghost Adventures hit it really hard. Uh, I think this is where the current standing manor house was built. There were okay. other standing sort of buildings on the property prior to this, but they wanted to lean into the devil connection. So they really hit the 1666 over the head. But as far as I'm aware, that is okay. accurate. <laughs> okay. I felt like that was just too easy. It is very on the nose, which is one of the mm -hmm. reasons I enjoyed throwing this topic together. In 1917... 
The grounds were purchased by the Sisters of Providence and converted to a convent and school for young girls interested in joining the order. In 1983, it was purchased by Michael Devereux, who reopened it as Loftus Hall Hotel, which was then subsequently closed again in the late 1990s. In 2011, the house was purchased by the Quigley family and run as a tourist attraction with guided tours of the property and seasonal events. Now I'm curious as to what those would be. Okay, I was going to ask. And like a seasonal murder. <laughs> the magical murder <laughs> mystery. Taking place on Volsperjiknap. Bless you. So people <laughs> people traveled from all over the world to Samhain. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> wasn't that that dude who dressed up like a fucking ICP dude and tried to make it a career? I mean, technically, but uh, it's pronounced Samhain for the good folks that are actually Irish. But for the rest of the world, they saw it in Halloween, too. And they're like, Samhain. What are you going to do? Well. So people traveled from all over the world to take part in paranormal investigations following the property being featured on an episode of Discovery Channel's Ghost Adventures with Zach Bagans. Uh, the gothic thriller uh, The Lodgers... I don't feel like that was on Discovery Channel, was it? Mm-hmm. Hmm, okay. But hey, at least you took your first swing. I'm like, I feel yeah. like I've only... What have I seen? I thought it was like a TLC show or something. Hmm. No, well, no, no. Shane does not for... Perhaps want scrubs. <laughs> I also don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> so the gothic thriller The Lodgers was shot on location at Loftus Hall in 2016 and premiered to purported international acclaim at TIFF 2017. Well, yeah, we got a lot of uh, love on that that platform as well. We have international acclaim through them also. Oh, we, we've done the tip. Season. So much. Tip. Yeah, we're, we've been. <laughs> Well, I mean, in a, in a world where all you have to do is say that you're internationally acclaimed to have international acclaim, uh, John here from the internationally acclaimed podcast, the disinformed podcast, would <laughs> Hot time, Tiff in the city. John's running around saying sand is titties. Yes. Ah. <laughs> uh. Surprisingly enough, as alluded to earlier, the hall was put on the market for sale in 2020, like most of the world. It's just up for grabs, the present. <laughs> Do you want this? Ought to leave this world behind. But what yeah. we are really here for, friends and neighbors, podcasters and only fans, is the ghost <laughs> story. Ooh. A Ooh. terrifying edifice with psychic trauma practically bleeding from the walls. Loftus ah. Hall has its fair share of ghastly tales dappling its dark history. One could certainly posit that many of these folkloric accounts could be attributed to creative minds attempting to market ghost tours to the general public, so take each story that unfolds here with the usual grain of salt. So it's on the internet and true. Is Zachary. <laughs> so tales of the hall playing host to the devil himself date back to the 1770s when Charles Tottenham assumed the role of Lord of the Manor, having to adopt the Loftus name to inherit lands and title as per instructions of Nicholas Loftus in 1752. By marrying the Honorable Anne Loftus, daughter of the first Viscount Loftus. Very, very engaging. Mm -hmm. Together, they had six children, four boys, and notably, two girls, Elizabeth <gasps> and Anne. <gasps> However, Tottenham's wife became ill and died while their daughters were still very young. Tragic, I know. Mm -hmm. Two years F following his wife's untimely passing, Charles married his cousin, roll tide, Jane Cliff, <laughs> and they lived together along with Anne, in Loftus Hall. Now, okay. I know no one on this podcast is going to endorse cousin buggering. Don't, don't talk bad about my family like that. <laughs> <laughs> she's not just my cousin, she's my wife. <laughs> You're pretty. And my aunt. Hey, if anybody's going to fuck my attractive cousin, it's going to be me, right? Someone's got him. <laughs> as long as it, someone, uh, yeah, someone's got to. So... Uh, one evening, Charles was resting in his home in 1775 with his second wife and daughter from his first marriage, Anne, while the Loftus family were away on business. 
On this dark and stormy evening, a ship was interred upon the Hook Peninsula, where the mansion is located. A young man, purportedly an emissary from the ship, sought refuge at the mansion to gain sanctuary from the storm. It is said the squall raged for days, and over that time Anne was seduced by the beguiling sailor. Because who doesn't love a little seaman? Yeah, it feels good on the throat. <laughs> throat coat. <laughs> you just smack yourself in the yeah. face with a microphone? No, I mean, it's my pop mic, like I said earlier. I'd like yes. a pop mic right now. Yeah. Yes, maybe sorry. maybe something is haunting his pop mic and hitting him in the face since we can't. It's the semen. I think his uh, microphone is finally trying to punish him for all the pain that it, he's put it through over the years. Side note. So if he's getting the vaccine soon, that means we're not far behind. Like, Shane, I, are, you might be eligible sooner than later, probably, right? I mean, I don't discuss my personal business on this platform. That's fine. Um, we're I'm just, both I'm just trying to lead this. alternates. You and I. Yeah, I'm just trying to lead this into hopefully within two months to three months, we will in fact be able to slap Michael in person. John, I'm going to make you a promise. Okay. On the day that I get the vaccine, I will gladly spit in your mouth. <laughs> you could just come and do that now for the love of the game. Take that to the No, bank. I mean, I usually spit in your butthole. <laughs> well, that's because Different. I'm perpetually dry. Indeed. I just need to make sure that I, I Keep it lubricated. get the... Uh, the the, you're gonna give me the, ready for my pecker. <laughs> you're gonna give me the gift of no blood. That doesn't <laughs> sound like a good get for me. <laughs> blood lube, starring John Watkins. <laughs> it hurts <sighs> when I poop. <laughs> That's hemorrhoids. So, if you stop the anal sounding, you would be a lot more comfortable. Huh, hemorrhoids. What a beautiful name. Mm. I think I'll name my daughter that. That's how we got so, Hermione. <laughs> or <laughs> her hoiny. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Which too well that, not be true. that definitely exists on the internet. We have learned mm -hmm. this. <laughs> Indeed. So it is said that the squall raged for days, and over that time Anne was seduced by the beguiling sailor. Finally, in an evening where the gales were notably monstrous, the family and their guest were enjoying an innocent game of cribbage. I don't know what a tawdry game of cribbage would look like, but well, we can find they that purported together. to very, be innocent. It'd be very violent. Maybe there's no gambling involved. Mm. Realizing that she had dropped a playing card, Anne, the daughter, bent down to retrieve it from the floor. <gasps> Uh-oh. The blood in her veins ran cold when she beheld her lover's feet. An instant after, Anne leapt up and screamed in revulsion... Let me do my best Michael impression here. You have cloven feet! Can you do that a little deeper for me, Michael? You have cloven feet! <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Got it. It's my best Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> I brought you my bestest dollar bill. So. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Ooh-wee. In response, the mysterious stranger seemingly shot straight up through the roof leaving only a sizable hole in the ceiling as evidence of his presence. <laughs> he noped on out of there. So anyway, I started blasting. <laughs> <laughs> I must go. My people Jonah, need me. I'm, what do you got, buddy? I'm just, I am trying to picture Cloven Feet Boy just jumping through the ceiling and like the logistics, <laughs> like someone has to fix that hole at some point, right? <laughs> I feel like... If you if you haven't, then I recommend that you do. But uh, it almost sounds straight out of like the seance scene and drag me to hell. Mm. Well, for the Christian amongst you, I know a good carpenter I can recommend. <sighs> Who? Christ, you <laughs> fucking mook! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes a lot more sense than what I was thinking. <laughs> Anywho, okay, so. Soon after, Anne became mentally ill. <laughs> Many would argue funny. she was mentally yeah. ill when she saw the cloven feet, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is cursed. <laughs> uh, tomato, go fuck yourself, as I would say to Michael. So, it is believed that the family were ashamed of Anne's entanglement with the dark stranger and locked her away in her favorite room where she could live happily, yet secreted away from prying eyes. Is that bullshit? That is not bullshit. <laughs> like they they Rapunzel's favorite room. <laughs> I don't know. Some of this, like, again, 
I had to do some pretty heavy editing on the Wikipedia because it was really ghastly written. Uh, the grammar was atrocious and there was very little in the way of detail. But that is a particular phrase that was featured on the Wikipedia entry. Is it, they locked her in her favorite womb. We saw best as dollar bear. The reason I elected to choose this one is I uh, I listened back to the Bell Witch episode, which is what, of course, gave us the, you know, by the eternal and uh, all the other nonsense that we had incorporated for a while. So I was like, you know, maybe dealing with spectral entities is one of the things that should stay in my wheelhouse. And we've and we've we're definitely back got like a. Yeah, for sure. We definitely have a lane now, and I like the lane. Like it's like we talk about like terrible horror movies, like ghost stories, which is where mm -hmm. we are right now. And then occasionally, when we forget that we're trying to be fun and entertaining, we let Michael do a science episode. It won't happen again. You <laughs> say that every time. Oh, by the no. way, my my sister had a question for you, Michael. Um, it was it had something to do with. Uh, she said. Hey, didn't he start an arc of episodes? Where are the, the remaining episodes? An arc and of episodes of what? The Elrond. third Two. installment of uh, Flat Earth and the second installment yeah, of uh, Homeopathy. El so and she asked the Elrond question. Elrond Hubbard and... Yeah, she asked the question. She's like, where's the other Elrond episodes? When, when are those happening? I was like, those are never happening. He gave up. She goes, oh, well, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> there, They were just too much. He, he, he just... He, he just had too much. I didn't want to write like an eight part, at like eight episodes of him or anything like that. So and I, we I just thank you. Yeah. You buy Nobody one book on Scientology and you find that he wrote it all for you already. <sighs> yeah, pretty much. And the map is there. Well, you just got. Sorry read for it. getting us off topic there for a second. No, this is what we're here for, friends. You don't need to sit and listen to me read the whole time. So, long story short, her favorite room in the house was, of course, the tapestry room. Oh. Bullshit. Uh, she hated tapestries. <laughs> <laughs> if only. It she makes me think of like a Indiana Jones and the uh Oh no. I love the that Kingdom one. of the Skull Fuck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> in the, oh, Indiana no. Jones and the Oh fuck. Uh <laughs> oh no. Whatever the third fucking Indiana Jones film is, I'm sleep deprived. Last Crusade? Thank you. Yes. Wow. Of the uh <laughs> Old man Claybolt said that I could come in and look at the tapestries. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are a Scottish lord, then I am Mickey Mouse. R.I.P. Sean. R.I.P. All right. Really? <sighs> um, that was actually Harrison Ford who adopted the accent, my friend. But R.I.P. Harrison Ford. And also <laughs> R.I.P. Bruce Willis because he's fucking buried after being a piece of shit in the Rite Aid. So. I mean, he's been a piece of shit for a while Wasn't now. Wasn't that the sign-off that Kevin Smith used on, uh, what was, was it, Hot Cop or whatever the fuck? Or Cop Out, sorry, Hot Cop. Cop Out, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want to see that film now, though. I have a feeling Kevin Smith would give us something very interesting. It was like, he was like, it's like, uh, thanks to everybody on the crew, except for Bruce Willis, you're a dick or some shit. <laughs> uh, I think Hot Cop is actually what Kevin does every Friday morning when he goes to pick up his newest installment of Weed. Uh, but uh, by the way, the movie's restaurant will be here soon. So February. we can all go get a glorious uh, vegan all, burger with was, one another. I was going to say, it's all vegan vegetarian. So yeah, we and can they, all enjoy They do have some actual meat offerings there as well. But yes, I just it's can... I just want to get a delicious moo ilk shake. Uh, I'm waiting for the hater tots, personally. Oh, I can't fucking wait. It's going to be so good. <laughs> you and I have fun. a date. Agreed. Melissa's excited as well. Fantastic. Uh, she's, uh, she cannot have beef any longer after having me. And so <laughs> she developed a, oh, uh, yeah. a milk allergy after all the bovine <laughs> injections I've been giving her. I feel like Jonas Swagger works uh, particularly well visually, so I'm excited for some after dark action because there's a lot of like nice, like tiny, like you're doing terrific bud smile nods that he does that mm -hmm. you obviously you just, can't. Yeah, it's hear. more of just like a reassurance, just like yeah, you're you're mm -hmm. you're talking still. Good job with your words. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> <sighs> so, speaking of the hot beef injection, uh, many accounts, of course, claimed that Anne was pregnant with the devil's child which she bore in secrecy in the room. On the tapestries? In the on the tapestries. Oh, no. <laughs> Around oh, the tapestries. No. With she was born in the tapestries. 
so following her seclusion, Anne refused food and drink, which would be difficult when you're pregnant, uh, sitting with her knees under her chin and staring out of the tapestry room window across the sea, waiting for her mysterious stranger to return. Anyone who's seen Rosemary's Baby will note this is the second act of the film, I think. Uh, so, when the child was born, Mr. Tottenham feared that it might be the Antichrist, paying off my previous discussion of the Antichrist is going to be discussed at some point, and so he murdered the infant and buried the bones in the walls of the tapestry room. And that actually happened. This is not bullshit that I came up with. That is burying, terrifying. Burying things in walls is weird wording. One. Two. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're afraid of the Antichrist, you don't litter its bones in the walls. That's like the number one way to keep it around. <laughs> it's in the handbook of the anti-Antichrist <laughs> methods. Do you want possession? Because this is how you get possessions. This is how we get demons, Lana. <laughs> Do you want demons? <laughs> this is how you get demons. <laughs> And when uh, you but... have demons, oh, no. <laughs> soon you'll have to go on dialysis. <laughs> and after that, <laughs> apocalypse. <laughs> in anywho, after the infant's bones were uh, stored in the walls for safekeeping. <laughs> Is that better uh, for you, Jonah? Is that, yeah, that verbiage like, okay? I'm, like, it's a castle, but you're burying something, so it's like dirt walls, like a little mud castle just in the middle of Loftus. <laughs> Loftus Hill is just a mud castle so next, filled with demon next bones. Next to the food pantry, there's also the <laughs> demon baby bone pantry. <laughs> you gotta keep those things cool. Uh, Are they... <laughs> uh, we call it the little baby cupboard. <laughs> the little baby cupboard. <laughs> Which is not what you would think at first glance. <laughs> dead baby cupboard, dead baby cupboard. It might be the Antichrist. Ah. <laughs> so, to lighten the mood a bit, Anne herself would pass in the same room later that year. Oh, it is said that when she died, they could not straighten her body as her muscles had seized with immediate rictus. Happens to Subsequently, everyone. yes. Yeah. Don't we all just curl up into the fetal position? Uh, subsequently, it was reported she was buried in the fetal position with a coffin that was tailored around her bizarre contortion. Was it so the world could kiss her ass? <laughs> <laughs> I just picture the open casket, like the open viewing and everything like that. Like just line up and puck her up. <laughs> John. They were. We got you covered. That's. <laughs> That's he died. How he lived. She actually wanted to be cremated. In saying she wished to be cremated, she wanted them all to kiss her ash. But it's still a little bit. <laughs> You're welcome. So, uh, the bones of the infant were later discovered in the wall in 1870 while the house was being renovated, and they were shoved into the donut hole coffin. <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey, they have a baby cupboard. <laughs> Them too? <laughs> I wonder if we can incorporate this into the existing layout, because, you know, I have some, some vinyl films I want to install. <laughs> we should put in a third door so that there's a, that comical, which door do you choose? Wrong door. That's the baby cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> there's a hot milk drawer. <laughs> Two hot milk drawers. <laughs> Honey, I know you said you wanted to get into scrapbooking, so I've got some dried flowers and a dead baby skull, and we're just going <laughs> to let you have at it. <laughs> I bought you a spirit box. <laughs> Eat your heart out, Crisply... Hobby Lobby. <laughs> See, <laughs> it's like crisply folded flag. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the hill that they're trying to die on. <laughs> they're like, this is quality content. It's what we want. It's making... Baby closets? <laughs> D <laughs> Display the desiccated corpse of the Antichrist in your living room. <laughs> Wait, for God's sakes, don't let the case get married. <laughs> yeah. Hobby Lobby. Same, same. <laughs> uh, all right. We're here to debone you. Uh, from that moment onward, after the infant's bones were discovered, Anne's spirit has been said to haunt the tapestry room, attacking paranormal investigators and tour attendees, once purportedly possessing a young man's body and forcing him to choke a young woman in the room 
in an inexplicable rage. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Before, this, according to that guy. This mm -hmm. is featured in the Ghost Adventures episode. They say in the tapestry room when they were giving a tour, the lights all turned off and one guy just attacked a young woman and started <laughs> choking her. And they do a reenactment of this on the show, which is hilarious because it is a guy who is very obviously trying to play possessed. And he looks like someone who is a reject from a Walking Dead casting call. <laughs> he they let everyone in. So throws that's... his arms out into the YMCA position and just lunges forward at her. <laughs> in a very, you know, Frankenstein's monster kind of... It's a lot of fun. Ah... <sighs> unexplained I just love how someone is like oh good i'm at the mud hut castle in the tapestry room turn the lights out so i can kill my lover <laughs> or this random woman who would not shut up during the tour initiation phase <laughs> i wanted to learn about the dead baby cupboard <laughs> And she's back on the dead baby escalator again. <laughs> she's over there running her dick liquor, and I'm trying to hear about history. I'm a strangler. Chloroform, more like boroform. <laughs> it gets better every time I hear it. So, unexplained weeping is also heard in the room and attributed to Anne's restless spirit. Also, any bedroom of a married couple in general. That is why it's our favorite Certainly room. yours. Right, Jonah? True, right? True. Has that ever happened to you guys? <laughs> you too, Spud? You too? <laughs> yeah, me neither. I just wanted to ask. Yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I ain't gay. Now. <laughs> oh, married? I ain't gay. So. Uh, to go to the second level of Inception, a letter in what was believed to be an indecipherable language consisting of symbols and bizarre script, was also discovered in the wall with the skeletal remains of the infant. That bullshit? Is what bullshit? Finding the inscriptions and shit on the inside of the wall. Did they find the letter in there? You made it sound like a like demon scroll. Like yes, was, was demon scroll. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is true. Okay. Something around here is not true. You're being very specific about, like, which thing are you calling out? He's very cagey. He, no, the, these boys are, are very used to just calling bullshit and, and hoping it's a blanket it sweep. It's going to yeah. take the entire Anything sweep, so I, I want... <laughs> Yes, you yeah, I actually, say. I did say. I think I said that last week. I was like, "Yeah, yes. the last fifteen seconds was that bullshit." He's like, "What about the last fifteen seconds? You fucking fuck." Yeah, like all of it. It's all. It's stream of lies. You said there so, was three, and it was three minutes specifically. What about this? Do you feel that they found etchings inside the wall? It's not etchings in the wall. It's, it's a, a letter, letter with the demon, text. which has language and symbols and bizarre script. That is what I was asking about. Yes. <laughs> the letter, the letter, is the letter bullshit? <laughs> You're like, the, was letter, the letter found why in is the wall? A, a the letter was not found in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I, the I, I deciphered what he was trying to get at okay. because he was tapping into my personality. You're welcome. I mean, it was beautiful. Well, the reason it. being, I, I just want to chime in with like John was straight up just like, yeah, that one specific thing, and then you described again the last ten seconds, and he was like, yeah, all that. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i called See, it on the whole the whole he, the he whole may segment. fold under questioning but the reason i ask is the letter is not bullshit but where the, the letter was found is bullshit okay where was the letter so, actually found in the center of the uh, donut we'll get, coffin we'll get to that later on <laughs> it was the jelly uh, i'm not gonna do the the michael and you know waste the the rest of a really good setup here by explaining or in, in advance i'm gonna get okay. to you at the, we're gonna the, the waste it wall. by interrupting it for way longer than necessary <laughs> exactly so, uh, consisting of 14 lines featuring a combination of runes, a variation of shorthand, and alphabetic letters from various languages, the letter, indecipherable in the 19th century, has finally found some degree of clarity in the modern era. Emojis. For over 300 years, researchers have been stymied, unable to decipher the symbols and letters in the strange document. According to Live Science, the director of the Ludlam Science Museum in the province of Cati... Nope. Catania in Sicily, Daniele Abate, said that the dark web provided an intelligence-grade code-breaking system that enabled them to eventually dark decipher the letter. Dark web. Dark web. 
This quote is priceless. Uh, We heard about software used by intelligence services for code breaking. We primed the program with ancient Greek, Arabic, and runic alphabet, as well as Latin, to descramble some of the letter, and the results would lead us to ascribe the meaning as something demonic, said Abate. The letter. No fucking duh. (laughs) This demon letter seems somewhat demonic. Hmm. Hmm. Strange. Hmm. (laughs) So the letter appeared as though it were written in shorthand. We speculated that its author, purportedly Anne Tottenham, created a new vocabulary using ancient alphabets that she may have known. How she knew them, we have no goddamn idea. The, the tapestry, of course. Uh, that was why it was her favorite room. Oh, All the I have read them on the tapestries. Uh, we analyzed how the syllables and graphisms, which are, I was not familiar with graphisms, uh, thoughts depicted as symbols... Uh, repeated in the letter in order to locate vowels, and we ended up with a fairly refined decryption algorithm. Eat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you say that. It. <laughs> this is not far afield. Oh, no. <laughs> so researchers say the letter rambles on about how humans invented God and Zoroaster, also known as Zarathustra or Zarathustra Spitama, or Ashu Zarathustra. I've been playing lots of World Good of Warcraft, Good buddy. <laughs> need help. Uh, it, who was an ancient Iranian prophet who founded what is now known is as Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism. Yes. It claims that God and Jesus are dead weights. I mean. And that the system <laughs> works for no one. It is rigged. This is known. <laughs> they tried to Stop. steal it. <laughs> Stop the steal. Oh, Trump know. those bitches. <laughs> and in the, yeah. the greatest of all climaxes, it also speaks of the river Styx, saying, perhaps now Styx is certain. What? <laughs> I know. That is uh, the strangest title for a porn. <laughs> the now. sticks is certain sticks is certain <laughs> damn yankees may be on the bill ah so the letter's presence which you have debunked as bullshit is attributed to the devil's residence at loftus hall and possibly perpetuates the idea that the discovered infant was indeed intended to be the antichrist well thankfully we dodged that dead baby Whew. indeed Good uh, work, everyone. The most recent <laughs> owners... They said abortions were bad. <laughs> <laughs> High fives all around. Who said that? <laughs> Just, yay, we did it, guys. <laughs> Woo! Oh. High fives. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, some of us have been trying to abort this podcast for a while, but... This is what happens when it doesn't work. <laughs> hey, and hey, when they hate to see it not stick. <laughs> <laughs> no more wire hangers. It's a messy uh, job. <laughs> but someone's got to do it. Oh, boy. Now, the most recent owners of the property at Loftus Hall, the Quigley family, claim that all religious iconography in the house, be it crucifixes, statuettes of angels, the Virgin Mary, or depictions of Christ himself, are decapitated or inverted by sinister beings haunting the halls. During the location's time as a convent, two nuns were claimed to have inexplicably fallen down stairwells in the hall, subsequently <laughs> dying from injuries sustained in their tumbles. <laughs> Something about that imagery really, uh, really gets you, huh? I just like, I like tripping nuns dying. It's like the most pure, like, yep, the devil did it. It's just still, whoop, and there they go. <laughs> oh, no, fell down the stairs. It's oh, like, since we were speaking accident. of strange porns. <laughs> Tripping Nuns Dying Volume 7 is particularly classy. It's Gives a whole good. new leaning to Gush and Grannies. Ooh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> too oh, soon? Oh, that, that's, that's too dark. Got it. No, okay. no. So, I so was laughing because, uh, <laughs> apropos, speaking of gushing, two other nuns drowned in the bay behind the hall. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. From all the pussy juice. Classic transition. Just pooling mm, that into was the a... bay. Good old Sigourney segue. Indeed. Uh, All of the nuns were interred on the grounds in a potter's field, which has also been attributed as a possible motivation for damage to religious iconography and artifacts found on the grounds. What is a potter's field? 
It's a field of pots. It's where they do their Harry Potter <laughs> cosplays. Oh, it is I like a, that better. a graveyard with unmarked graves. There are no headstones. They just simply inter bodies without uh, giving any idea that there are bodies there. Got it. Which is thank you. Fun. Like a baby cupboard for the field. And for those who are religious, the height of sacrilege. And now, in 1998, in the events that would lead to the closing of Loftus Hall Hotel, a study was conducted to examine brain activities for induced paranormal experiences. The research, conducted and overseen by Dr. David Marrow of Maynooth University, which is outside of Dublin, was designed to account for gaps found in previous parapsychological research around paranormal activity. Parapsychology, for the uninitiated or those who have never seen Ghostbusters, Michael. <sighs> Don't give me that look. Yeah, you, you haven't seen it. I have, but I also covered this uh, last week, partially. So, parapsychological phenomenon. Oh, you act like that was coherent. <sighs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie there, bud. I, uh... Pure disappointment. I don't the, remember the, a lot. The silence of he was just like... I. Because we can see each other, but he's just there, just silently disapproving. No one else knows. He just how died. Safe. I just saw. I just saw the life leave this motherfucker's eyes. He looks like Ann Tottenham staring out the window of the tapestry room with the dead baby cupboard just the de standing the open. Dead baby. <laughs> dead just baby gonna, cupboard. Just gonna assume the fetal position. Just beckon people to kiss my ass. <laughs> the new book from L, L. Ron Hubbard. Dead baby cupboard. <laughs> All right, uh, well, yeah. since uh, for those of you who were n not drunk enough to remember Michael's episode last week, parapsychology is a field of study concerned with the investigation of paranormal and psychic phenomena, which include telepathy, precognition, clairvoyance, psychokinesis, near-death experiences, reincarnation, apparitional experiences, and other paranormal claims. Near-death experiences are paranormal? I feel like that's just like, yep, I drove a little too fast on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's more like if, if we're doing the serious the angle, like and... yeah, I was gonna say yeah. that that shit, like when you're actually like under, ah. like passed out, the, or... my life flashed before my eyes situation, yeah, that kind of yeah. shit. Okay. Not or like, oops, I forgot to pull out all the way, <laughs> or like the time where I would have sworn that I was taking a nap and astral projected. <laughs> or, where did you go though? Asher projected. <laughs> I don't think I've ever told this story, and it's like one of those. Uh, it's dumb. But it's quick. Maybe I got so all the I was time in my in the old, world, but I was in my old apartment. Uh, I was still dating uh, Shane. Uh, I was dating Clitoris Shane. Rex. Yep, you said it. Uh, Darth Clitoris. And she worked on the west side. Obviously, I live here on the east side. And she was driving to come, you know, spend the weekend. And I took a nap. And I swear to God, like I was like floating outside of my body. And I went downstairs and I saw her parking her car. And I saw her walking up the stairs, and the moment that she knocked, I woke up, and I was back in my own body. Huh. I also were, it was back when I was getting into weed again, so it could have just been, I was just really fucking high, so I don't know. Michael would say that you have ESPN. Da -da -dum. Yeah. Da -da -dum. <laughs> I, uh, I have a fifth sense. Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's super smell. <laughs> I like that Michael liked that one the most. <laughs> It's because so. he only has four. <laughs> I do not have a sense of taste. <laughs> that has been very well noted. <laughs> Makes it easier to eat ass. <laughs> it's just, hey, we're kidding. We all know Michael's senseless. Uh, it's just chocolate if you where think am I? about it in the right light. <laughs> And I'm Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good pterodactyl sound, good buddy. <laughs> I'm a frog. So, uh, <laughs> thank Mero. you, Stephen. I'm a hack and a frog. <laughs> okay, Ribbit. let's get through this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, Mero employed a profiling test using a recording of brain electrical activity as a parameter, which noted the electrical activity of the brain produced while presenting stimuli in the form of auditory and visual probes while stationed in unlit rooms in the home. So for those of you who have watched paranormal investigators who turn off all the lights in a place and then walk around with a you know a handheld device trying to speak to the ghostesses, 
essentially they did the same thing here, but in the background, they set up lighting rigs and little spooky movie noises and just set them off at random. Got it. A nice control test where they're like, you know, it will make this scary if we make it scary. Exactly. <laughs> but wait, there's more. So... I, oh boy. I ruined my own my own segue. Lighting rigs and horror film soundtracks were employed to elicit electrophysiological evidence. Well, easy for me to say. Uh, electrophysiological evidence of a person's exposure to paranormal activity in a reportedly highly haunted household. This non-invasive scientific method according to him, of interrogation determines the presence of specific neurochemical triggers in the brain in response to perceived harmful events, attacks, or threats to their survival. Mero hypothesized that the environment itself, coupled with the anecdotal history of prior incidents, creates a state of apophenia. Apophenia... For those playing the home game is the tendency to perceive a connection or meaningful pattern between unrelated or random things. AKA of Got the it. Bible. <sighs> or the Damn, idea is, is your mind sees what it wants to see. It will ascribe meaning to things whether it has it or not. It's the it's the Jesus and the toast. <laughs> I don't want to acknowledge that I know what you're saying because I feel like leaving it silence is better. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's the jesus and the toast <laughs> just i so ordered that at denny's with my grand slam <laughs> it's like your answer to like the world it's like well i had a really bad day you know didn't get to work on time and you know nothing tasted right you know just everything was off today it's like oh yeah well that was the jesus and the toast jesus and the toast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new phrase so uh the incident creates a state of apophenia, which the body responds to with a fight or flight response rather than a reasoned and rational response to the stimuli. So the environment impacts how you perceive events. So if they build you up to think something bad's going to happen to you, you will respond as though something bad's going to happen to you. Surprise! This is an incredibly scientific principle, is it not? <laughs> it's a real, oh, gee, man, I haven't thought about it like that before. Exactly. <laughs> Whoa! It was the 90s. Come on, there's a lot of dope being slung here. It was Ireland. That's a real Michael's Irish accent approach to things. Oh, so geez. the study... <laughs> oh, geez. This was intended oh. to take place over a three-week period with a pair of groups being brought to the home and observed while touring the property. One group would be given a sordid spiritual history of the house prior to touring, where their brain activity would be monitored and a blood sample taken. The other would be shown around a, as though touring a stately historic home for the control group, with the same physical monitoring taking place. During their first night of study with the case group, Dr. Merrow related the stories of the devil's presence and paranormal activity at Loftus Hall. When one of Merrow's assistants, Eleanor McGill, declared that she felt a hand on the back of her neck, which was a planned stimuli in the experiment, she was violently <laughs> thrown to the floor. <laughs> Wait. Oh, yeah, we need to stop there. I, I, <laughs> a planned stimuli was a hand in the back of the neck and being shoved to the floor. They were like, come here, Mary. Let no. me just... So, this is WWE. <laughs> <laughs> so she is supposed Science. to tell the group <laughs> that she feels something. And then jumped onto the floor. Marilyn's no, so a gangster. She she's, says, she's in it for the bit. She's like, I feel something. And then she gets violently thrown to the floor by an unseen force. Oh, according so to part of it she was sorry to say, no I feel so essentially okay. she's just supposed to try to trigger everybody in the room by saying i think i feel something and when she says that she actually gets <laughs> thrown to the floor <laughs> okay from from how it sounded in passing was that there was literally like like just uh, someone right behind haunted her. house like <laughs> exactly like, you know like a yeah halloween right. haunted house where like all of a sudden someone grabs the back of your neck right and everyone can see the hand but this right. is like an invisible force Throws exactly. her to the fucking so you, like, it, throat it, slams her. With any paranormal investigation, you know it's automatically there's someone who's walking around going, "Did you guys hear that? Wait, did everybody hear that? There's this one like, it's running so, down my leg." Yeah, so essentially she's going, "I feel something's touching me," and then she just violently flops forward onto the floor <laughs> like a boned fish, and she's dead. She's she's dead now. <laughs> Wait five seconds. <laughs> the fall resulted in a broken neck for Damn. Eleanor, and her total physical paralysis for years afterwards. Oh! <laughs> the study was immediately abandoned, and the house was quietly put up for sale, which is why it is no longer 
the hotel. <laughs> Mero never published any material regarding the experiment itself, and he was soon relieved of his role with Maynooth University, with the school's Dean Yeager issuing the statement, We believe that the purpose of science is to serve mankind. Dr. Mero, however, seems to regard science as some kind of dodge or hustle. His theories are the worst kinds of popular tripe, his methods are sloppy, and his conclusions are highly questionable. I mean, short, he managed to summon a ghost, so, like, I think he's doing pretty good. <laughs> well, for those who were not present, I don't think they believed that to actually be the case. Uh, in short, he was a poor scientist, and this university will no longer continue any funding of any kind for his group's activities. And we also Ooh. wish for his mother to be viciously fucked. <laughs> But not in a good way. I was just trying to make Michael feel better that there are other people out in the world who are being lambasted by their betters. And uh, uh, you're, you're so not alone, friend. That. So question for the group here. Fire away. Um, would you rather um, get choke slammed by a ghost and have your neck broken or listen to Michael talk about quantum stuff again? Yes. <laughs> I'm down for quantum stuff because it's not an again for me, and I do enjoy a good sleep. Oh man, Courtney made a face in the background. <laughs> <laughs> she thought she was getting. She, I like she that looked she, up like, like never she again. She sensed the disturbance in the force. <laughs> she heard just somebody's commenting. Michael I can't have that. Hey, well, Courtney, like, you uh, say something. It's like someone saying the R word in front of a group of individuals who have actually experienced the trauma. And yeah. uh, watching the trigger happen. Oh, you yeah. can't say that. Yeah. No? Yeah, you don't, you don't say that. Indeed you cannot. Well, that, friends and listeners, concludes my presentation on Loftus Oof, Hall. We only counted out one out of three. I feel like there was lots of just random little details where it was actually the letter had seven lines and not 14 or some that other. That is you how you think. play the game. Yeah. <laughs> well, we used to do stuff like that. We kind of try to avoid that kind of what lies inside of lists no like number lies like oh yes. it was 14 lies it was there 14 lines it was actually seven lines yes we're like, trying not to do silly nonsense like, like that actually now. the satanic didn't letter was the a last haiku. topic that i did <laughs> <laughs> didn't i do a bullshit lie like that in my last my Several. last one yeah <laughs> he I, said that's why that's why it's not popularly done well it's because you're I, I a little behind the times on it so i'm just that's, behind that's... in general well i didn't want to go there but Oh, sorry. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't do Threw that. That model. looked so fucking hot. I actually did. So congratulations. Ooh, uh, what taste. What, what's it taste like? Ooh, I love it. Mm. That was a uh, Filiberto's chicken burrito and no some uh, up, though. chips a... and guacamole. We and live I'm, in the high I'm society. I'm thinking the, the grease. For it. The grease actually came out of someone's scalp as opposed to you know canola oil or something. Well, it is Filiberto's. Yes. I expected nothing the less. The best of the Bertos. <laughs> Helps cut costs when it's just self-manufactured. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I'm just real. scratching themselves over a vial. I've had a really weird out. sentimental itch lately, and I work down the road from Don't Rebel. scratch it. Get it checked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I work right down the road from Rebel, so I pass the, uh, the Bertos that's next to Rebel. Oh, which man, that's is... sketchy as all hell. Which is the desperation eats after a show? Mm -hmm. What is it? Is it a Tilio? Is it Tilio Bertos? I, I think it's so. A long Bertos. Or Julio Bertos? Yeah, or but one of the yeah. We should do a fuck Mary kill on the different Bertos, but we should do it <laughs> well, with our actual stomachs. Them. <laughs> yeah, we should do it with our stomachs. Like we should go do like a, a mystery tour and see which one gives us food poisoning. I'll, dude, I'll tell you, like I I only trust Phillies, and even that, uh, I'm still somewhat skeptical about. Well, in you most was closer instances. to like sometimes there's too many L's, and you're like, this is a lie, Philly. Not to make this the uh, disinformed Mexican food corner, but oh, you live close to Carolinas, don't you? Uh. <laughs> Carolinas. 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 <laughs> like, sorry. Not to make this. You only I mean, you close nailed to the it. Carolinas. Yeah. Was like, yeah. Sorry. You that was talking uh, about Mexican food. That was so I went down to Michael. Carolinas the other day. <laughs> uh, I actually, the restaurant near me is Angelinas, but uh, there is a Carolinas next to us in relative proximity. That's where you should go. That is the least specific. Uh, yes, that's true for everything. Relative proximity yeah. is. I don't need I anybody trying to track me down. We already listed all the Got bear toes on our around. I feel like they're going to triangulate it anyway. 
Good luck. It's Arizona. There's 18 million <laughs> Bertos scattered through the Phoenix metro area. By the time this episode is published, there will be three more. And I then mean, by the time more. we finish that sentence, there will be three more. All right. Anywho, what do we miss? Here are your lies. Uh, of course, you got that uh, the letter was not discovered in the wall. What I will tell you is the letter was actually purportedly penned by a... Uh, what would we call it? A, a schizophrenic nun back Hot. in the 1700s. Oh, uh, and so this, this letter that okay. That's... does exist. Uh, and they did have to go through the dark web uh, dark deciphering web. it, which is even more entertaining. I was going to do a whole presentation on that. And I'm like, this is too much. And I, there's no detail. All of the descriptions were obsequiously vague. It's always like, Oh, yes. They always list the same three lines of just like, oh, yeah, well, God's a dead weight and, uh, you know, river sticks. Rabble, rabble. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, okay. But cool. uh, all the other nonsense surrounding that, other than the fact that they attributed it to Ann Tottenham, uh, is correct. Uh, according okay. to somebody else's right. nonsense, right, not right, right. Shannon's. Yes, 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 yes. Indeed. Uh, and, of course, the second lie is that the letter's presence being attributed to the devil's residence at Loftus Hall and possibly perpetuating the idea that the discovered infant was the Antichrist is a lie because they did not consider the child to be the Antichrist. Uh, oh, so that was a long haul. So, so then they just killed the child. They just, just killed because... the baby because they didn't want to be ashamed of the fact that their daughter got knocked up oh, by a yeah, longshoreman. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Like, huh. Okay. <laughs> Which is no less insidious. I mean, if we're being honest, it's actually more revulsive. So you're telling like... me that this little piece of fuck trash was born at sea? <laughs> Into the cupboard. Uh, seagulls. They are the worst. <laughs> the cupboard. So, baby in the cupboard. Baby in the dead cupboard. Dead baby cupboard, yes. Uh, <laughs> the, the claim on the episode is, though, that they did find a dead infant in the walls, which... Christ. That's, that's still very, very... Very it's troubling. like finding a twenty dollar yeah. bill in your coat, where you're like, "I found money." That's nothing like finding it. That's nothing like finding a twenty dollar oh, bill in your coat. Is, you know, they're like, "We found it. We put it there, but we found it. It's new." <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Uh, the only $20. way it's close to a twenty dollar bill is if there's still some meat on the bones, and you're like, "Oh, lunch." Oh yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yum yum yum. Baby back ribs. Indeed. Barbecue sauce. Uh, Baby now. does not have back. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore uh. <laughs> not when i'm done with it uh Jesus. so the final oh, one yeah. and i had to change it because the initial year i listed was 1997 and i was sure that john would have leapt out of his chair if i had said that so i had to slide it over to 98 uh all of the discussion about the events that led to the closing of the loftus hall hotel the experiment conducted by dr david marrow and all the parapsychological bullshit is all made up by me. Oh, Wait, none the whole, of this happened. The whole story? The, the whole story. So when I started saying in 1997, the events that would... Li everything after that is just me making shit explains up. explains why you said a non-invasive procedure and then immediately was like, <laughs> and they took blood samples, something like that is. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah, shoot. <laughs> it's I, I made this thing as ridiculous as humanly possible. I also, because we have a bunch of folks in here, uh, Dr. Marrow is featured in The Haunting, which is the original cinematic depiction of the haunting of Hill House, which was released in 1999. Uh, character you names were lifted fuck. directly from that. And the quote from Dean Yeager is from when the Ghostbusters were fired by the dean of the college. That is a direct quote of what was said to Peter Venkman. <laughs> we believe the purpose of science is to serve mankind, and you, Dr. Venkman, seem to regard it as some kind of a hustle or a dodge. Your theories are the worst kind of popular tripe, your methods are sloppy, and your conclusions are highly questionable. Yeah, so. Motherfucker. That was yet again, really good, Shane. The lack of Ghostbusters understanding in this group is going to be brought up every two weeks, so meanwhile, just brace. Meanwhile, constant listener Steven. Steven. I, I told him to brace. Because, uh, yeah, he's uh, he called the Dana Barrett lie previously. He did. And discussed um, it with me today. Also... He made an amazing <laughs> may may and shared it with you. He did. Us. It's on. It's on the twitters for it those is. of you who follow Disinformed there. And uh, it should. 
if our if our social media manager decided to actually do her job, it would Ooh, be on her Instagram oh. too. Oh, I'm sure. Off in the restroom right now, she's so sad to be called out. No, she can she can hear it. She knows. She, she felt it. She knows what she did or didn't do. You know how uh, how well she beasts can hear. That's a fact. <laughs> She was described. Oh, wow. okay. she was described as a force the other day, and I haven't heard anything more apt. <laughs> as a force, yeah. like a, not even a force to be reckoned with, just, just a force. A force. Like, and I was, she's I, a force. Not even a, a foreskin. <laughs> force in nature. <laughs> well, not even Forrest uh, Gump. I can think of no better <laughs> organic way for me to say. By the way, if you want to catch up with us on these now still completely inactive social networks that we've handed over to Courtney, you can find us on Instagram at Disinformed Podcast or perhaps over on Facebook.com slash Disinformed Podcast. Or if you want to see the picture of Michael as a frog. He is a frog. That is on the Twitters. You can find us there at Disinformed Pod. And also, we have a, a slew of entertaining material just winging your way every single week on the tubes of you, which includes Wednesday's installment of our freaky fan fiction read of the Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miraculous, Woo. which is gently cresting <laughs> into the final chapters, which Stephen is very excited for, but I am yes, just really. disgusted at the at the. Well, Stephen is the one who recommended we read this, True. so he has True. been uh, you know clinging with bated breath to the entirety of this performance because he's he actually asked me an interesting question, which I will pose to all of you when we get to the episode proper. There, okay, and, I'm uh, we'll we'll think about it. But uh, so Wednesday, ten a.m. Mountain time. You uh. can find us on the tubes of you presenting that, and of course. On Fridays, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, you can find us on the tubes of you presenting Disinformed After Dark, which is our little decompression video cast as a companion to this very episode. So you can hear us talk about random nonsense related to, you know, the Irish drinking a bit too much and throwing babies into walls. And, uh, you know, just join in the fun, the mirth and the merriment, and occasionally we will dive into a an intriguing Chuck Klosterman hypothetical, which is going to be lots of fun yeah. for everybody. Jonah, you're going to be joining us. Uh, Hi. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sweet. I got no other other plans, and I still have... No other 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 plans. I have this and a few other things. You, my friend, you have gone to through that, that wild on, turkey you know, like uh, like it was a bottle of water. It is a bottle of water, to be fair. To be fair. Oh, only two. That's sad. To yeah. be fair? There you go. I do not follow <laughs> trends. <laughs> He has been well documented. Ignore me. <laughs> well, gents, thank you for enduring a little more of the uh, the spiritual hullabaloo for another week. But I can guarantee it was better than what Michael had in the wings. You did save us. You did. Sh uh, you did spare us from a twelve gauge sandwich. I'm that well, guy. I'll throw myself on top of the grenade. I'll do it. He's you. only delayed the inevitable. God, the Sad threat. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the threat. Yes. The threat. He was just waiting for it. I'm going to get him. <laughs> I always get my man. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> you sloppy bottom bitch, you. <laughs> Isn't that a band? <laughs> it's going to be now. <laughs> <laughs> Their first release is called Unexpected Anal Leakage. <laughs> Sloppy bottom bitch. <laughs> that name you would hope they would expect it, but I guess surprises happen to everyone. You know, a shark is insidious. And I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> I was going to say, if you just ended the episode right there, it would have been fine. <laughs> No and sign off. No, no, they just saw Mark is insidious and then just the ghost of black. Actually, I would be okay with that. It wouldn't be a fade out, though. It'd be a slip out. <laughs> oh, Michael, I never listened to the rest of the episode last week because you bored me to fucking tears. Did you fade it out? You fuck. Yes, you faded it out. <laughs> the one time I fade out. Don't give John anything don't give me anything you know he's not gonna appreciate it and he won't even know that it happened i'm just gonna ask for more it's the story of his marriage wait hello? what now quap hello quap and me all right for the disinformed podcast this 
<laughs> Insidious Week. I'm Shane. <laughs> I'm John. I'm Michael. I'm Jonah. And thank you, Jonah, for being here. It has made this such a wonderful and soul-enriching episode. ooh <laughs> Scottish accents and Sue. <laughs> <laughs> All Press right. F to pay respect. <laughs> this is a drink for Chester Charles Smith my and the daddy. blue in Georgia Clane. My daddy. So long. <laughs> And good night. So long and good night.